This is the VI characteristics required practical and we're going to do a fixed resistor, filament bulb and a diode. We're going to do them for positive and negative potential differences and we're going to vary the potential difference and we're going to measure the current. First of all, and always do this whenever you are setting up a circuit, place your apparatus out on the table as it appears in the circuit diagram. Once you have the apparatus as they are in the circuit diagram, then start working through the wires and just work in one direction around the circuit. I suggest complete the series loop with the ammeter and the component you're measuring before you actually wire in the voltmeter. That's just going to mean that you're going to get less confused about which wire goes where and also you're going to know that you've got the positive side of the circuit and the negative side of the circuit because it's really important in this practical that you can change the direction of the potential difference or change the direction of the current flow. Memorize the diagram for this practical and remember to state that when you use a voltmeter you are measuring the potential difference across a component so you wire the voltmeter in parallel and that when you use an ammeter you are measuring the current through the component so you wire an ammeter in series. Circuit's all set up now and this is the first of our three components, this is for a fixed resistor. All I'm going to do is I'm going to change the supply potential difference. Then I'm simply reading off the potential difference on the voltmeter and the current on the ammeter at all of the settings on the power pack. As you might expect, you can see straight away that a higher PD gives you a higher current. A higher push, if you like, gives you a higher flow of charge. Once you've done the full range of PDs from the positive direction, you're going to change over the two wires connecting to the power pack so that you effectively change the polarity of the supply. You're now in effect running the circuit backwards and you're just going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to increase the potential difference and you're going to take those readings, but you're actually going to write down the negative values that you get on the voltmeter and ammeter. Cool, so we take those results and we put them in our results table, potential difference on the left and current on the right. And we use them to plot a graph. I'm using Excel here, but you're very welcome to use the results and write them down in your book and actually plot yourself a graph on graph paper. Hopefully you can see that I'm writing down the same number of significant figures that my meters gave me, and that's an indication of how accurate we've been. I've measured potential difference to two decimal places or three significant figures, so I'm gonna record those three significant figures. Sometimes I just need to tell Excel to show me the correct number of significant figures, as you'll see me do in a second. Very usefully, Excel will plot a graph for us. We still need to make sure that you do things like axes titles. Excel will also add a trend line, and a trend line is essentially a line of best fit. And we know that with a VI graph, so voltage on the x-axis and current on the y-axis, we know that the gradient is the inverse of the resistance. In other words, the steeper the line is, the lower the resistance. Now this is a straight line graph, meaning that the gradient doesn't change throughout the entire range of the graph, meaning that the resistance is fixed. We can say that for this resistor, throughout this range of potential differences and currents, the resistance doesn't change. We can say that throughout this range, it obeys Ohm's law, and therefore we call it an ohmic resistor, or because the resistance doesn't change, a fixed resistor. Switching it up now for a filament bulb, I'm simply going to reset my circuit so I've got positive and negative the right way around and sub out my fixed resistor for a filament bulb. It's the same circuit though, so you only need to memorize this once, you just need to replace the fixed resistor with a bulb. Same procedure as well, I'm just going through all of the settings on my variable power supply and I'm going to record potential difference and current and then once I've got through the range, then I'm going to rewind, change positive and negative again, and measure the potential difference and current in the negative direction. Same thing again then, results go in the results table and this time my sheet's already set up so it's just gonna plot the graph as we go. Is it gonna look exactly the same as before? Is it gonna be a straight line? Let's find out. Now 
no, a straight line does not seem to really fit this set of data. So there's something else going on. You can see that actually the line that fits this data is actually a curve. It's a curve of decreasing gradient as we increase the potential difference or as we increase the current. And a lower gradient means a higher resistance. So in other words, the filament bulb has a higher resistance when the current is higher. But it is the case, and this is important for the next bit, it is the case that it's the same shape in the positive and negative regions of the graph. So next we're gonna sub out our component for a diode. What a diode is, is it's a semiconductor, it's made of silicon, and it only allows current to flow in one direction. There is a slight variation in the setup that I actually use for this. I'm actually using a variable resistor, which is just off to the top right, to control the current. This is because if I put the full range of potential differences across my diode, I will have such a high current through it that I'll actually melt it. So I'd rather not melt it, and that's the only reason for that difference, so you don't need to worry too much about it. Essentially, we are varying the potential difference and we're measuring the current in exactly the same way. It's just that we only want to go as high as three volts. And we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna do a range of positive potential differences and then change it over and do a range of negative potential differences and record our results, plot our graph. So watch the current as I increase the potential difference in the positive range. Nothing happens until about 0.7 volts when suddenly After 0.7 the current increases very rapidly. This diode has a very low resistance after 0.7 volts. That's pretty much the same for all silicon diodes, we call that the knee voltage. Now we're gonna change it over and we're going to run the whole circuit in the negative direction. For me, I've always kind of liked the diode symbol, it helps me to visualize this because it's like a play pause button. The current will play in that positive direction, in the direction of the arrow on the diode symbol and the current will pause in the negative direction. Watch the range of negative potential difference and notice that no matter how high the negative potential gets, we still get zero current, nothing at all. A diode has a very high resistance in the negative direction. Here we go then, this is the exciting bit, it's graph time. You can see really clearly that curve around 0.7 volts as it starts to conduct and it starts to have a much lower resistance and you get basically voltage proportional to current after 0.7 volts. But now when the negative points start to go onto the graph, you can see in that negative direction, the negative potential difference, you can see no current at all. Excel can't really plot me a line of best fit or I can't make Excel do that for this set of data, but that's essentially the shape of the VI characteristic graph for a diode. So just to sum up what we're looking at on some circuit diagrams, on the right hand side we have the positive direction, the current flows in the direction of the arrow on the diode symbol. In the negative direction on the left of the screen there, well the current is stopped by the diode in the negative direction. And that's shown in the graph on the top right there where we have a low resistance in the positive direction, so we have a very high current, and we have a high resistance in the negative direction, so we have an extremely low current. These are the free sketch graphs for the free components that we test out in this practical. You need to memorize them and you need to be able to sketch them accurately, and you also need to be able to discuss what each graph shows and give reasons for that. Thanks dudes for watching Guerrilla Physics. There's plenty more videos just like this one on required practicals, study tips, and also tutorial videos and even exam technique. So stay tuned, make sure you're subbed up and see you soon.